Hi, and welcome to the Capital Budgeting Calculations presentation for Chapter 10. Now, let's talk about the payback period. How do you calculate a payback period? Well, it's pretty simple if um, you have, say, an initial investment of 75000 to buy a business. The business is going to generate $4,500 worth of ca cash flow every year. So this would be an annuity equal stream of cash flows. In this case, you just divide the initial investment by the, the cash flow, annual cash flow, and you get the amount of years to you pay yourself back. And of course, the higher the cash flow, the smaller years it takes to pay yourself back. Okay, so that makes it pretty simple if you're dealing with um, equal cash flows. But what if you have unequal cash flows like this example? So in that case, you have to um, you want to take calculate the cumulative net cash flow. So in year zero, the cumulative net cash flow is whatever the initial cash flow is for the investment. And then you add together the previous year's net cumulative net cash flow to the next year's cash flow. And two, you, you don't stop until you get to a positive number. So once you reach a positive number in the, the to create the formula, you're going to take the last year of a negative number and you're going to add that to the absolute value of the last negative cash flow divided by the next year's cash flow. So what this is saying, the ABS is saying, let's get the absolute value here. So we're saying if we have a thousand dollars, a hundred dollars we owe in year two, what, how long would it take in year three to pay that self back? So considering that the cash collection would be even, if you had, it would take a third of a year to get this $100 out of a year you're earning $300. So you can see that 100 is one third of 300. So it would take about, you know, uh, four months. But we're going to measure this in years, which are going to be a year in percentage of a year. So once we enter this formula, we see it's, 2.33 years. So in the next example, in example two, um, I follow the same process where I calculate the net cash flow until I get to a positive amount and then I take the the last year of a negative cash flow which is two full years and then I'm going to add to that the absolute value of the last negative number. What happened here? start over here. I'm going to add the number here. Plus I'm going to add to that the ABS of the last negative year divided by the next year's cash flow to get a percentage of that year. So this would be 2.67. So take a minute to pause the video and complete the third project by yourself and then I'm going to review it um, next minute. Okay, so following that same procedure, calculating the cumulative cash flow by adding the previous year's ending cash flow to the new year's cash flow. And I'm going to repeat the cycle until I get to the first year where there's a positive cash flow. And we see that year four is the first year of the positive cash flow. So I'm going to add the last year of a negative cash flow, and I'm going to add that to the absolute value of the last negative cash flow and I'm going to divide by the next year's cash flow. And that gives me three years and 93% of the last year, which makes sense. Okay, so let's move on to net present value. So we see the formula in the textbook. This is the formula from the textbook of calculating net present value. But it's much simpler in Excel. So in Excel, we just need to go into formulas, insert function, and look for net present value. 
and then we're going to input the rate and then we're going to input the values from year one to four we're not going to input year zero and we're going to say done and now we're going to last step is to take at the end of the formula to add year zero so this is just kind of odd the way this works in excel but you have to always add year zero to the end of the calculation so let's do that one more time okay so for net present value i'm going to first select the rate and then the values i can just highlight them in a row and hit done and then i have to remember to add back year zero and for sort of both of these calculations um, these are positive net present value so they would be acceptable projects take a second to pause the video and complete the third project on your own before I review it okay so for the third project following that same scale input the rate select the values done and then add to it the end of the formula we want to add back year zero so this is another positive net present value and you can see if you play with if you play with the discount rate if we raise the discount rate look what it does to the net present value it lowers it so now we have a negative net present value if the rate is at 55 percent so this is a one way of kind of understanding if we go the other way you see that it increases all the way to one so you can see that the if you lower the discount rate the net present value increases and if you increase the discount rate the net present value declines okay so let's move into internal rate of return so the internal rate of return calculation what we're trying to do is get net present value to zero so we want to see at what rate would bring net would bring net present value to zero which would equal the rate of return on the project so again we're going to insert internal rate of return function and here we just highlight the year zero to four. So this is different than net present value because in net present value, we don't include year zero. For internal rate of return, we do include year zero to the last year of cash flow, and we just hit done. And we see here that we were able to calculate 8%. So let me do that one more time. Just highlight the, the information and you get your value. You may want to make sure that you open up the cells a little bit to make sure that there isn't any fractional amounts when you're uh, calculating this. You can try this last problem on your own. Just pause the video and restart. Okay, so if you've calculated this, you know that your return, your result, should be 11%. So there's how you calculate internal rate of return. Pretty simple, right? But this is the basic formula that they use in the textbook. <clears throat> but Excel is a lot easier, and since your exams are online, I encourage you to use spreadsheets to calculate your variables for your different projects. Now let's look at um, determining net present value in a different layout. So here we have two projects, Project A and Project B. So which project is the project of choice? So I created a little if statement down here to say that if um, B11 is larger, Project A, but if B, I'm sorry, yes, C11 is larger, Project B. So it automatically will switch here. So if I had a 5 and a 1, it'll switch here. If I had a, a 10 and a 25, it'll switch to Project B. So, uh, and the textbook describes how to do that. Now, to, to calculate the cash flow here, again, I'm going to use net present value. And I have the rate here. And then the values I'm going to press done but I'm going to add to it at the end the cash outflow and if we do it again for this project same rate but we have different values done and then I'm going to make sure that I add back to that the initial investment so here project A has a higher net present value than project B so using these same two projects, let's calculate the internal rate of return. So um, select on all the values, hit done. For here, select year zero to five, done. 
and here are project B. So here we have a conflict. We have the same exact projects, but we have a conflict of results between net present value and internal rate of return. Okay, so let's move down here. Um, you should try, try these two examples on your own. Uh, pause the video and try to calculate them on your own. Then I'll, when, I re when you restart the video, I'll complete the calculation. Okay, so we'll go back here to internal rate of return and we'll calculate the internal rate of return for both of these problems. And we see project B has a higher internal rate of return. And if we do a net present value on these two projects, we select the rate first and then the values. And I'm gonna to add to that Remember here we're just selecting year one through five. And then we're modifying the formula at the end to add back year zero. Okay, so again, now, now these would line up and say that project B is better for both. There's no conflict here. Okay, moving on to the capital budget case here at the end. So basically they're saying in this case, calculate the net present value, calculate the internal rate of return, and in this case, the two methods produce the same result, or basically, is there a conflict? And then calculate the payback period. Okay, so here's the cost of capital. Here are our cash flows. So I'm going to let's move this over a bit. And then I'll call it my fall insert function box here. And I'll do net present value first. So the rate plus the values. start over here and make sure I'm in this cell when I do it <clears throat> so the rate plus the cash flows hit done and then I'm going to add to this the initial cash outflow so it looks like there's a net present value of 1 million here and doing the internal rate of return use that function and just highlight all the values hit done and it's a 14% return. Now payback period is a little bit more complex. So I'm gonna use that same strategy where I'm taking what we call, we're gonna write up here, cumulative cash, uh, cash flow. Net cumulative cash flow. So, so we're gonna keep adding these cash flows together until we get to our first positive amount. So then we can do that same formula where we say, take the last negative year, and we're gonna add that to the absolute of that last negative year. Divided by the positive amount of the, of the following year just like we did in the first page. So we get 6.98 years. Okay, so that's how you would calculate this end of chapter spreadsheet problem. Okay, so that is the video showing you how to make the calculations for capital budgeting. Uh, and this is a good approach to use for any homework or exam questions is use Excel to calculate your results. Okay, thank you for your time. I hope you found this helpful.